Hello friends, myself Komal Sharma and topic for today's presentation is and writing as an indicator of learning disability. After going through this presentation, you will be able to learn about meaning and types of learning disability, learn about handwriting as an indicator of learning disabilities, various disabilities, dyslexia, dysgraphia or dyspraxia. Let us begin with the first slide which is about the linguistic skills. As we know, there are four basic linguistic skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing. Child acquires language in the same order. As we see when the child is born and in infant stage, he listens first and then he learns to speak and when the formal schooling starts, he starts reading and then writing. Listening and speaking are learnt in non-formal setup whereas skill of reading and writing are developed in formal setup by practice and drill and other various methods. Learning disabilities. This is the term which was first used by Samuel Kirk in 1963. He described a specific group of children, adolescents and adults who have problem in learning. Now the point comes learning in which area? Generally the areas related to the learning disability are reading, writing, spelling or mathematics. Now comes the meaning of learning disability. After going various definitions of learning disability, we have come out with the three factors or we can say the three formulas which define learning disability. The three formulas are discrepancy formula, exclusion formula and the inclusion formula. The discrepancy formula is the child with learning disability shows a discrepancy between achievement and intelligence that means his ability or her ability and the output and the exclusion formula means those who are excluded from being learning labeled as learning disabled handicaps such as mental retardation visual and hearing impairment and emotional or behavioral disorders must be ruled out in this case we can say a child is not able to cope up with his studies because of his hearing problem he is not using the hearing aid in that case he will not be termed as or labeled as learning disabled. The next one is the inclusion formula who are included in this. It is a psychological processing disorder and presumes a central nervous dysfunctioning. Means there is some dysfunctioning in the central nervous. There is in a simple terms we can say the cross wiring. Now the types of learning disability. Types of disability depending upon the difficulty areas are can be categorized into five types. Learning disability is an umbrella term with dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia and non-verbal learning disability as its type. Dyslexia is the one which deals with the difficulty in reading. Dysgraphia is the one which deals with the difficulty in writing and we have to take care of it. The writing doesn't mean only and only the graphic one, but also the expressive one. And this calculia is related to the difficulty in mathematics, in solving mathematics, in having the problems in time, concept, or length, breadth, height, understanding all these concepts. Then comes the dyspraxia. As we can see in the picture, a child is struggling to tie his shoelaces. He is unable to use his fingertips. That means he may be having difficulty in fine motor skills. His fine motor skills are not developed. So dyspraxia is the difficulty in movement. The movement can be related to gross and fine motor skills. Lastly, which comes out to be non-verbal learning disability, difficulty in social interaction. Here, the child, as you can see in the picture, very much he is sitting alone and he loves to sit alone and doesn't want to communicate with other peers. It is the difficulty in the social interaction. It is like children with difficulty in reading will almost invariably 
also face difficulties in spellings and writings. Means reading, writing and spelling all can be connected. The disability can vary in kind and degree from the child making only spelling mistakes to a handwriting that resembles the bird scratches. That means the spelling mistakes is just if at times he is omitting some words, some uh, uh, like in the case of seen, S E E N. He may write S E N. Sound system, phonics comes over here. Then comes the handwriting as an indicator of learning disability. How handwriting can be the indicator? Let's go through this. Last week, A, B, C, D, E, forget if this is 52 degree or 55 degree. Last week, I was on holiday and it was a fantastic, but my busy trip was practically no time to write. Definitely no morning sessions. When I returned home, a stomach flu further delayed my participation in this thread. This is the sample of a good handwriting. Now, if I show you the second part of the handwriting, which is, hello nation states, this is my handwriting, rather arcurious, isn't it? Can't tell you how many times I have to practice my last name, which is Mears, and people haven't been able to tell. What I wrote, haha. <laughs> My cursive mind writing or my cursive hand is more worse. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So if we can differentiate between the two writings, the first one is legible, very clear, in which each and every word formation is clear. And in the second one, it's really difficult to read some words. And if we see some words are written with the wrong spellings and the line, no straight line, it's the running in the different shape. So this is the difference between the writing, legible handwriting and the writing with the problematic person. Now comes handwriting, the skill of writing. Further, handwriting can be divided into two parts, the graphics or the mechanical handwriting and the second one is the expressive handwriting. Therefore, it could be concluded that handwriting includes legibility along with expression, clarity, accuracy and spelling. Writing disorder is as we have done is known as dysgraphia. Extremely poor handwriting or the inability to perform motor movements required for the handwriting. This is the definition of dysgraphia given by the learner in 1981. Here he talked very much about the motor movements. Motor movements are the gross as well as fine. Whereas particularly for writing, we require the fine motor skills. For holding the pencil, for keeping the paper in the right direction, all are these are required in the fine motor skills. The learning disabilities that cause an otherwise healthy bright youngster to have significant difficulty in producing neat, legible and expressive written work in a certain length of time. Another thing adds to other definition, the certain length of time. Maybe he is able to do his work, neat and legible work, but in the time not given to him, but in the extended time. Now study about the indicators of writing disability. In this very much slide, you can see it is written U, V, W, X, Y, Z and a child is writing, see the formation of U which is coming after giving the boundary, after giving the hint where to write, he is taking the U, she is taking the U to the under the line and the next alphabet V where he, where it's very small as compared to others. Now let's discuss illegible writing. What these are, the, this is the first indicator of bad handwriting, illegible writing despite appropriate time and attention given to the task. Appropriate time was given to the child and you can see the writing in which very very few words are legible. I didn't know and but 
couldn't make any sense as we read as a piece of a writing. Next comes the odd rest position. In our daily routine, we must have observed students in our class holding pencils with different ways. We leave it to them, let it be like that. Maybe their parents taught them like that. Maybe at times we see the child writing in this manner. At times the child holds the pencil like this as I have shown in the sample. So these are the sample pictures where the thumb wrap is there, tuck, we tuck the pencil like this. And you can see the inter digital brace or the fingertip grasp, hook shape and many, many more different uh, varieties of uh, holding the pencil or the writing uh, pens and all we will see. Next comes the what the indicator is, child sitting and a child's odd body posture. At times child is leaning down on the table and writing the words. At time and we can say it's not always, maybe the child is feeling bored. But if it is a frequently observed, it should be notified. Then the second, in the second picture we can see the child is slouched posture. We can see the slouched posture of the child. The other hand is also resting on the legs and he is slouching. Next indicator is for the odd paper position. We very much know that while writing, if the child is right handed, we keep the paper in this position. And if the child is left handed, we hold the paper like this. But in this you can see the picture. You will see the child is either doing it like this, which is making him strenuous over here. He couldn't be right, uh, couldn't able to write properly like this. And he may feel the pain in the shoulder and because of which he will very soon leave the task in between. He will say, I am tired. And the other which is shown is like this and this again. If we do like this, again there is a pain in our shoulder. Again there is a sprain in our back, which will be the hindrance in writing and which will in return will come to an incomplete task by a child. Other indicators are poor organization of the page. Poor organization in of a page means in a very big space, just two words are written. Or just in this space, number of words are written. Poor left and right hand coordination. Orientation or the coordination, it can be both. Instead of writing with the right or the left, it's like that. As we know, many or we see the cases in our schools or the colleges, child is writing with the left hand. And we, we as teachers, we as parents tell them, no, left is not the good hand, you should write with the right. But this is like their orientation is such, we should not insist them to write in, uh, to make the shift of their left hand to the right hand. Next is the inconsistencies like mixture of print and cursive that we have seen, upper and the lower case or it may be the toggled form. Toggled form is the one in which the first alphabet of the word is small and the rest are the capitals. Or the irregular size. The first alphabet is too small to read and the next one is too big to see. Then the, to fit in the page. Then the shape, shape of the alphabets. And uh, normally we see that in case of if we say about the handwriting of the mathematics, we have seen, we have observed students write five like S or the slant of the letter. Slant in a sense, maybe they are writing in the left slant at once or the right slant in the other line. It's another, neither pattern could be observed in the writing. Then inconsistent space between the words and the letters. Like if we see two words or the two letters, the difference is two fingers like this and in the now, next one it will be like this much difference. So what will happen? there will be inconsistency. Excessive use of erasers, writes one word, writes one sentence or maybe only alphabet and then erases it again and again. Then decreased speed of writing or copying from the board or inattentiveness about the details when writing. Details of the writing over here means where the capitalization is to be given, where the punctuation mark is to be given. All these comes under the inattentiveness about the details when writing. Holding the writing instrument, that means writing instrument here we say about the pen, pencil as per the age requirement. 
holding the writing instrument very close to the paper you will observe the students having the writing difficulty or the disability they hold the paper yeah the writing pen with the tip and which makes them not able to see whatever they have written cramped our yeah, unusual grip and writing from the wrist normally when we write we write like this we just move our wrist along with the elbow but they keep their elbow stiff and they write they just writing from the wrist which again becomes stiff and becomes hard and difficult for them to write for the longer time or to complete the task next is unable to transform ideas into a form of written communication when it comes to the verbal communication they may recite its poem they may tell you the story narrate the story but when we ask them to write it on the paper they may lose all things what they do ideas are like what should come first they are unable to arrange the ideas in a systematic order maybe they are able to then there are the grammatical problem sentence formation is not there sentence structure is not there then punctuation marks are not there which entirely changes the meaning of the sentence maybe capitalization is not there frequent spelling mistakes are also observed like the reversals or the omissions reversals may be as in the case of dyslexia we see dog is most of the time read as dgod omissions omission of some words we have written good they may read god such mistakes are made by them so these are the indicators these were the indicators which we discussed about the handwriting the one thing uh, which i would like to tell you words from the mouth of a child with dysgraphia very well written says i can do something that not even my teacher can do very interesting i can do something that not even my teacher can do what's that read my own handwriting this is all about the dysgraphia so today we did about the indicators as an indicator of a bad handwriting for the learning disability in which we discuss about what is learning disability what are the principles on which we can say the child is dyslexic dyscalculic dysgraphic and next we listed about the indicators and that's all for today thank you